everyone. So today we got to play Ticket to Ride because um, we got a request for it. And um, so the basic theme is that you own a line of trains and you're basically going to build them across the country depending on um, your, the, I guess, the orders to get to reach certain cities, right? Um, so that's... A, really overarching theme of it. Well, I um, want to point out this is the 10th anniversary edition of the game. So the game has got nicer components than what you'll get in the standard edition. We'll talk about the differences a little bit when we get into talking about quality and different things. But Right, which is, first is, let's, let's dig right, into let's it. Alright, let's get right into it. So first of all, you see the board is, in our case, is taking up like nine tenths of the table. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the standard board is probably about 66% uh, of this. It's probably about to here. It's not nearly as large. It's more... Uh, but, it, but it's the same map. It's the just same smaller. Map. Yeah, it's so just smaller. So the train pieces are smaller. Everything fits. It's just yeah. smaller. All of the, the trains in the 10th anniversary edition are uh, you know made much nicer. You have just standard trains. They're all the different colors, but they're all exactly the same train in the base game. Yeah. And you don't have these collective pins, if you will, that uh, feature each different kind of train. Um, so it, you know, it's it's got a lot of components that are nicer. The other thing is really the big difference is the cards. So the cards in the standard edition are about a half the size of these cards um, for for the train cards. The uh, I believe is the tickets are also smaller, right? Yeah. 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 So every all the cards are pretty much smaller in the in the standard edition. So um, you, if you don't mind, and first of all, this one I think is out of print. It's harder to find. So it's, it's harder not, to find, but not impossible. Yeah, I, I still see it up for bid, and it's not outrageously expensive. Yeah, but it is definitely pricey. So, so the, there's pros and cons to getting the tenth anniversary edition if you're out in the market for it. Uh, the nice thing is it is big, the cards are easier to see, it's, everything's larger. And the trains are gorgeous. Yes. The bad yes. thing about it is all of the expansions that were originally released have a different backing on the cards. And they're so, a different size, so and, they're not compatible. Yeah, so you cannot mix and match any of the, the upgrades to additions to the game with this, this version. Now what you can do though is they, most of the expansions in the, at the, towards the end of the Ticket to Ride, I think Ticket to Ride is still releasing things, mm -hmm. is new boards, new maps. Yep. That Those you could still play and that wouldn't be an issue. Uh, but it's just anything that features the standard size cards. So my my sister inherited a lot of things from me that I bought that were upgrades for this that I couldn't use anymore. But the I think the biggest one is like the, was it the 1910? 1910. They incorporated a lot a, of Yeah, the, it was a small box expansion. To yeah, but it, it was the one that added the most benefit to the game. That one we incorporate, <laughs> eh, I, that's what I say. It, it, th those were incorporated into the game, we had, or at least a good chunk of it was. I don't think it was all the cards. Now, but a lot I, of I do want to point out though, so we talk about these, if you do have the base game, um, and that's what you can find. You can upgrade your trains. Um, there are several different places that you can get 3D printed, um, mm -hmm. really cool versions of it. Mm -hmm. I've printed a purple color. Um, uh -huh. Of course, that's my favorite. So, um, so don't feel absolutely at loss if you can't get this version or you're concerned about compatibility issues. You can, you know, get upgraded trains. Yeah. And, and you did a places. really nice Disney one for my brother. I did. So there are... Um, STL files um, available, through, I think Thingiverse or something like that, and uh, they have different Disney um, theme trains. Disney theme trains. I'm sure yeah. there's many other varieties sure too. That was. Just oh yeah, there's like Victorian mm -hmm. era. There, there's a bunch of options. Um, so if you have a 3D printer, or you have a friend, or you can always, if you provide the files, you can um, hire somebody to do to print those for you. Um, you can rent their printer and their expertise. Yeah. You can't necessarily uh, uh, buy the print. So just be aware of that. Um, so don't be at all lost if you can't get this version of it. There are ways to upgrade the game. But looking at this game here, let's talk about like what would you score quality of pieces wise? 10. I really do agree on a 10 here. You can't really upgrade this anymore except for maybe the scoring tokens. I mean the cards are better, the art's better. The tokens are, the trains are top notch. You can't get any better. Yeah, the the board is fantastic. The Quality cards of the are board good. Is good. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, the only thing that they might have done a little bit different is maybe something besides a scoring marker of a, a wiggly square. Uh, but Well, and it's a wooden wiggly square, like, I, mean, I don't the, know... The, I mean, I'm fine with the wood part, but, you know, the, why not make this look like a, a special type of train you know, or, you know, something that's still a little bit more thematic. Maybe a than, scroll, like mm -hmm. a... Like a mm -hmm. um, uh, what's but, it called? But that's a, a very, a very like a yeah, piece maybe of like stock a stock, but that's paper. Very, very minor. I mean, oh, I know, yeah. absolutely. Like a, we're reaching here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what's uh, you probably can't see real well, but the trains all each color ha the has a custom feature of the train. So like the the blues are the uh, passenger cars. The browns are like uh, root beer barrels that are being hauled. Black or coal mine or coal truck cars. Red or circus, circus cars with, with little, giraffe. little tiny giraffe heads popping out. They're yeah. really cute. Yeah. Uh, green. Uh, uh, this the. Uh, these are like the cargo cards, cars, I believe. Yeah. Um, I think they're animal. And, it, or, and that's uh, all of it. Yeah. That's all the colors. Yeah. So the, I mean, it, they're they're really nicely yeah. done. Uh, the. I would say the, my only grievance is that the yellow color is kind of turned into this brown, which isn't bad. I mean, at least the the, tra the color looks brown over there too. Mm -hmm. But the marker is yellow, so it's just a little odd. But you know, that's again, that's minor. Yeah, it's very minor. So, but it's barrels. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah well, the barrels would be in brown makes sense. The marker, the marker should the score have been brown. marker should have been brown no, too. Well, no they one wants to blended. play brown. Well, no one wants to play yellow here either. Or it would have blended. So yeah, that's, that's true. That's, that's true. true. <coughs> but so what what would you, what did you score? I'm not gonna give it a perfect. I think uh, nine is probably a good score. And this is just for this version, the tenth anniversary yeah. version. If we're scoring, I think we should be fair. Score what the traditional uh, ticket to ride is, and I, I think that one's probably more of an eight. I mean, the thing is, is the uh, the uh, what's the company that makes this? It's oh, sort of Days of Wonder. Yeah, Days of Wonder. Days of Wonder always does a really nice quality jobs mm -hmm. on their games. I, that was one of the reasons I was a little disappointed when they were acquired by Asmodee because they always will go above and beyond, and I'm just concerned that being part of the conglomeration that we could see some, that. yeah, some of that get lost. But so far it hasn't. They mm -hmm. just haven't been releasing a whole lot of volume. But um, you know they they always make good quality games. I, I, you know the, not not always the best games in the world, but the pieces were always nice. The boxes were nice. The components of them, are, I mean, the rules are always done well. Uh, they they've always got a good, higher quality than the average company. Um, so even the base game of this, if you don't get the luxurious you know tenth anniversary version, is still very nice. Yeah. So see, what is your favorite piece of the game? Like as far as components. I would say the fav my favorite part about the pieces are these little like The circus trains with yeah. the giraffes. Yeah, they're, I, I just like the giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it is so true. That's my favorite mm -hmm. car, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so on to theme. It's a train game, guys. <laughs> it's a very basic train game. Yeah. I mean, and there's a reason why this is considered one of the premier starter games for anybody getting into board games. Yeah, but, it's, but so many people love this. This is it's a great game. Even yeah. see the first it's a, starter it game. It's a fun game, yeah. but it, it's easy to play. Yeah. Yes. I mean, my thing is that like I've got the app. And you know how many times I play it just on the app oh, with yeah. my family I play it just all the time. pass mm -hmm. it around. So to say, yeah, it is a starter game. Yeah, it's an easy game, but it's still entertaining, and yeah. it still can oh, be absolutely. very difficult. Uh, as well, you know, more. It, it can be a cutthroat game. Cutthroat it, game it, is it, probably the If you got the, the right kind of players playing the game. Yeah, like my dad and negative sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody was a little bitter that they got cut off on their path, and there was an alternative that he could have taken to, but he ended up not seeing that and blocking your path. Yep, I'm not particularly happy with this, <laughs> but oh well, I, I lost oh, handedly yeah. because of that. Yeah. Um. All right. So, rate the theme. Give it a number. Um, I'd give it a seven. I mean, it's a train game, and it's got the map. I mean, this is the same discussion yeah. <laughs> we had about Concordia. Yeah. It's a map. You can't really do a whole lot more than they've done. I mean, they've incorporated little you know, symbols from the different geographic areas onto the board on this version. It's not necessarily the same for but the I would regular. But like I would like to point out, with the really cool trains, I do give it a higher theme because yeah. of this particular version. 
So to say a seven, I think that's a little low for this for this because yeah, jerk. the because well, it, no, because you are also <laughs> relating it to the original. I know, I'm and so I mean, I'm. We talk about how great the components are. But and I so, mean, for, but you have to look at the in game as a whole, and for this particular, I don't have to. I can do what I want. Because <laughs> yeah, you American? Because I'm American, and I want to rate it <laughs> a seven. American? Because because I think that thematically it doesn't. You know, the 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 mechanics of the game doesn't push the theme. So it, it's 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 okay. I mean, I love the game. I'm not saying I don't like the game. It's oh, no. fantastic. But thematically, it's a little dry, and it, but that's okay. Again, I'm I'm a fan of that. So my thing is, is with the really cool trains, I think it it, it leads you in a lot more than the base game. And the base mm -hmm. game, I for can sure. With, with you. I would much rather play this version than the original, <laughs> hands down. But to be honest, and we'll get to this in gameplay, this isn't my favorite version of Take the Ride. Yeah. So. Really? So. Yeah. Okay. What was your score? I think an eight. I mean, it, it's I'm not. I'm not super. You know, it's not super heavy on theme, and it doesn't have to be. But it one is. more than, than yeah, my seven. That's right. And, and a I'm seven. a bad guy. Seven makes you jerk. Ooh. Eight makes you right. That's what it, uh, no, I mean, the the, the 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 it's the map of the United States yeah. in this case, and it doesn't really need to have. I mean, you're going to have various maps, and you have different routes as a result of those maps. And there's a, a little bit of gameplay differences from some of the maps, but for the most part, it's just different geographies mm -hmm. and different routes so that you have to learn how to tra get traverse those areas and in some cases learn a little geography so you know maybe you'll learn that Aztecs don't live in G Egypt. I don't think that was um, an issue with this one but thank no, you. No it wasn't yeah. in this case. Um, so so you know as far as this you know there's not a whole lot you can do and they, they did what they could they put right. in little symbols on this version not their base you know the base uh and this game is by is. far the most beautiful version of the game yeah for sure. yeah okay so let's move on to well rules. we didn't ask her what's your thought on the theme does it feel like you're traveling the united states by train no <laughs> what does it feel like it feels like a normal game a normal game. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Now the rules. All right. So we uh, we didn't read the rules. That's because we played this but, but, a bazillion we, times. The only thing we reference is just to remind ourselves on starting hand and starting tickets. So well, the rules. That was it. I didn't read the rules. Yeah. The rules <laughs> book is twenty four pages long. Twenty four. Different language. Language is only a page and a half to two pages yeah, long. You so you really, I mean, each, uh, like, back, front and back, that's English. And then you go into French. Yeah, like and, we said, there's nothing yeah, to the game. Uh, <laughs> German and 50 bazillion other languages. It's, it's you know, it's very... It's cards, straight play game. Well, it's like, very easy play. game. It's, you yeah. know, you draw, either draw two cards, draw one wild card, or play you play trains. trains. That's it. Or you get tickets. Um, if you, you know, if you were already reached all your destinations or just want to gamble on more destinations. Um, but apart from that, there's really nothing to it. And But yet, it's still got a lot of strategic strategic action going on in the game because when you're trying to play, somebody else might... So we're heading into game you. through. Okay, okay. Let's finish rules. Rate it. All right, rule, rate the rules. Look, but the little there, I need the, you need the rules, I'm giving it a nine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's straightforward. It's very, it's got a lot of pictures. And it's, and cla and it's classic Days of Wonder rule book. It's, it's extremely well laid out. Yes. Very well done. And I believe usually they have like a website you could even visit on the back or whatever. And this one, I'm, I don't see it. But usually there's a reference. If you don't understand the rules, you can yeah. always contact or go to this website, which is always cool. All right. So nine so, all around nine, for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're at the game the gameplay, which is pretty straightforward. You either pick up cards, play trains, or get more tickets. So the gist of it, as Miranda said, you got to draw cards. So you have five cards laid up front, and you can choose to draw two of those, or as Randy mentioned, one wild. And the goal is to be able to get the right number of color of cards for the trains you want to set. So for example, this says five orange or five white. So if you get five white tickets, then you can place your train. So that's a confusing part to some people is they think that the color of your train matters. The color of your train does not. It's the color of your cards that's on the board. Yeah. And yeah. so, and then the wild can substitute any other color. The thing is though, is you have to have at least one color and any number of wilds for the track that you want to lay down. Yeah. So for example, you could do four wild and one white, but you could not do five wild. You have to have exactly at least one color. And, but other than that, draw two, 
draw one while, or place trains if you have the right number of cards in your hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. I, I do want to note for color blindness, they do have symbols on each of the color. They do. And a symbol on the card, so color blindness isn't an issue with this edition. I don't know what Yeah, I, I don't think the original has the uh, symbols on the cards. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I do want to point that out. Um, and then the only other aspect of the game is tickets. So the goal is one to score the most po or one way to score a lot of points is your tickets. So your tickets specify which two cities you want to try and connect. And so like I had New York to Chicago. And so I wanted to be able to try and connect those uh, those two cities in your route I wanted, but I had to get those two so I can get the right number of points. If I don't, by the end of the game, I lose those number of points. That's kind yeah. of hurt Miranda. Yeah, because you got to realize, so if I, I had a 16-pointer and I did not make the ticket, so not only did I not get the 16 points, but I lost 16 points. So that could have been a 32-point difference in the actual score because of a two-space right. train because my dad didn't want to use the other route. And then there's uh, some in-game uh, conditions as well. You can get longest route, so whoever builds the longest continuous train gets an additional 10 points. And this version of the game also has Globetrotter, which is the most number of completed tickets, gives you an additional 15. And Randy got both of those. Yeah. So that was 25 points that he got really? just uh, being Randy. Yeah, and, and, and we could, I was so close to beating him on longest road. Um, yeah, you were two all, or no, you were more because you had all these up here. Yeah, uh, you yeah. were a lot closer thought initially until I saw that. Yeah, yeah I had to work hard to get that one pink it's strand to make the it. Loop. Yeah. yeah, the loop. All right, so what would you rate gameplay? Give it a number. I'd give it a nine. It's a, it's a classic for a reason. It's a well loved game for a reason. Again, it's not my favorite version of the game. My favorite version is Ticket to Ride Europe. And, uh, you know, someday we can, if we play that, uh, I'll go into more detail why I think that's a better version of the game. I, I would give it a 9, too. Yeah? What's your favorite part of the game? I would say my favorite part of the game, there's literally one thing. What's that? I like putting the trains down. <clears throat> it's like the main part of the whole game. That's a big part of it. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, what would you rate it, Randy? Yeah, you know, it's it's just a tough one for me because I, I like the fact that it, we can play it with Sarah and we can play it, you know, with, with anybody. With, really? Yeah, I mean, anyone can. It can is, this is an easy game and to get to the table, even with non gamers, mm -hmm. you can get them in, into this game. So I like it for that reason. So as an entry level game, it's a great one. I agree. As That's a, why I want to do it After playing it all these times, it's not high on my list of ones I want to get out every time. But, you know, it depends on the crowd. So with that in mind, as an entry-level game, I'm going to give it a 9. Uh, it's not, again, something I would prefer to play. I agree with that. Uh, so if, if I were rating it as an overall game, I'd probably give it more of an 8 or a 7 even. But it's just because, one, I've already played it so many times, right. and there's just not that much to it. Well, I mean, I think, and I, I, I think it's true when we talked about before is that, like, I play the app even now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, we'll take the iPad and pass it around, you know, while you're sitting and just hanging out, and it's just something to do. So, this, this game is just a staple um, in the collection, or just, you know, just in standard life, that giving it any less than a nine, I feel, is a disservice to this game. So, that's my score, a nine. If you don't like luck, you might not like this game, though. It's very luck-based. Yeah. I don't know about that. You draw cards, there, there, you There's plan. a little bit of strategy. Well, yeah, but you can you, there's a lot of drawing and fishing. Why are you going to draw tickets? Drawing and drawing and drawing. And trains. Drawing. I mean, yeah, honestly, yeah. and this is where I, do this, <clears throat> I did this wrong this game. Normally, I just collect all the cards until I can go about my complete route. And no one can stop me or try to block me. <laughs> oh, um, I can still try to block you. Yeah. Well, but by the time, by the, most of the time, it's too late. By the time I get it, well, I have a good up, friend, but. Leslie Bradley, who plays tournaments in this game. She's extremely good at this, and that's what she's good at: is once she can card count, so that she knows exactly who's got what, pretty much, and she can totally complete her tickets and block everybody else at the same time. Wow. So she's at a different level with this game. So, all right, well. Um, Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, we had fun tonight, and we hope mm -hmm. you guys enjoyed um, hanging out with us today as we discussed Ticket to Ride. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more of what we do. 
And thanks for joining us. Yep, thanks Bye. for suggesting. Bye. Bye.